Fred Ricciani, TSC here at Radio Row at the NFL Scouting Combine in Indy, sitting alongside Lee DeKemper. He is the managing editor of JoeBucksFan.com. There's a lot going on in this combine. Obviously, a lot of speculation about what Tampa Bay is going to do. How's everything going, man? Hey, can't complain. Walking and talking, you know? Absolutely. This is a big draft and a massive offseason for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Pretty disappointing season outside of uh, James Winston's massive passing yards total. What's your overall assessment in 2019? 2019, I think you said it best, it was disappointing. It started out terribly defensively, and as the season went on, ironically about the time the Bucks released Vernon Hargraves, their defense, I mean, went, it was so much better. After the, the, the secondary was the biggest uh, Achilles heel for the Bucks. The run defense was excellent and finished the season best in the NFL, which is very surprising. But they couldn't stop the pass. And as the season went on, like I said, Shaq Barrett started getting better. JPP came uh, came back from his fractured neck. They got rid of Vernon Hargraves. The rookie cornerback started playing better, and they really meshed well the defense toward the end of the season, where they played pretty sound in the last month of the season. And the way the Bucks played. In November and December, halfway through December, they're like, wow, this team maybe, maybe might make a wild card, maybe. And especially after they just pounded Detroit in the middle of December, they absolutely destroyed Detroit. Jameis went nuts, and then people are starting to think, is wild card a possibility here? And then Jameis fell flat on his face the last two weeks, and the Bucks the last two, ga last two games, finishing 7-9, and nine, and Jameis played so bad with his picks that it rocked the Bucks to their core to the point where now they're looking past Jameis. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. The big question is what's going to happen with, with Jameis Winston? There, You can't make this up. The dude threw 30 interceptions, and in the offseason he got LASIK surgery for his eyes. So now apparently he has perfect vision and can see who he's throwing to. But I, I feel like you know that silliness aside, it's almost too little, too late in my opinion. Where do you think Jameis ends up, and what do you think the Bucks should do? If you had to put your GM hat on, what would it be? Oh, I'd keep him. I, I, I you, the guy would have to, for me, throw 50 picks to get rid of a guy that throws for 5,100 yards. There's only four human beings that ever stepped the face of the earth that threw for 5,100 yards. I'm not giving up on that. No way, no how. I'm sorry. I'm a big believer in production. Produce, produce, produce. Well, that's production. You, can, you and I can throw 30 interceptions. We can't throw 5,100 yards. We can't throw for 30 touchdowns. So I'm, I'll give you a quick story. The former baseball manager, Whitey Herzog, is in the Hall of Fame. And when I was in college, I was lucky enough to cover some Cardinals games. He was managing. And I got to know him, and he was such a great guy, such a smart, a common sense kind of guy. And he told a story about a pitcher he had by the name of Todd Worrell. He was a fireballer. And they were thinking about drafting him, and they were sitting around on draft day, him and his uh, scouts and other coaches, and they were discussing about drafting him or not. He threw like 95, couldn't hit the broadside of a barn, though. And he asked his coaches, he go, what about Worrell? And, oh, no, no, you can't draft him. He said, why not? He said, well, he has no control whatsoever. And he throws 95, right? And, yeah. Well, guys, we can teach a guy control. We cannot teach a guy to throw 95. That's what I look at with Jameis. You've got a wild horse here that is rare. Coach him up, as Terry Bradshaw said. Coach him up. See if you can smooth him out. Give him another year in Arians offense. If he still stinks out loud in Arians offense, okay then. And by the way, Jameis has never thrown 20 picks before in his life until this year. So is that an outlier? I would say yes. I would say yes. But I'm not going to I'm. I Until... Here's my belief, and this is one reason why the Bucks are the Bucks. I mean, they've stunk for over a decade. They have a bad habit of letting good players go and replacing them with guys maybe half as talented. So if you're going to get rid of anybody, I don't care who it is, you better make sure his replacement is equally as good or better, or you're going to take a, a, a you're going to drop off. And if you replace Jameis with a lesser quarterback, guess what's going to happen? And that's where I stand on Jameis. Hope that wasn't short enough for you. <laughs> No, that, that's some great insight. Now, I want to talk a little bit about JoeBucksFan.com because you guys have been around for quite a while, and it's great to see a, an independent outlet like yourself here amongst you with the ESPNs, NBCs, and Radio Row, and it's great to see. But you've had to deal with a lot of ups, a lot of downs with the Bucks. How did this all start for you? Well, ironically enough, it started because of the Rays. The Rays used to be owned by a guy by the name of Vince Namoli. Um, I can't really say what I think about the guy without you getting in trouble with the FCC. So I don't want to do that. Um, and we, my business partner and I, Steve Isbitz, 
of JoeBucksFan.com. He's my business partner. We were going to set up a rave site because we thought the Tampa Bay media was softer than soft on Namoli. He was never, ever called out, and we thought that was irresponsible. And we were going to start up our own site and go after the guy because we thought the local media was not doing their job. And yes, I have a journalism degree. Yes, I've got about 30 years in the print newspaper business. That's my background. So Steve and I, we could see what was going on with newspapers. We could see the future. We, it was happening before our eyes. Declining uh, readership, people being laid off left and right, papers being shuttered. And so Steve and I decided, you know what, let's do a buck set because we knew there was interest in the bucks. We had some intel with the Tampa Tribune. We both worked for the Tampa Tribune. I was a sports writer. He was a cops reporter. We had intel that the, the Tribune could write anything about the bucks, anything at all. And I'll give you an example. They wrote a small, like a blurb, like a four-paragraph blurb on a backup long snapper. That got the most traffic of any story in the newspaper. So we knew there was interest. And when we got together and decided, okay, we're going to start up a buck site, I remember telling him, you and your audience, we get a laugh out of this. I remember telling him, we cannot do AP style, which is general newspaper style. I said, we got to be outrageous. We got to be like a New York tabloid. We got to be like Phil Mushnick. <laughs> and here we are. And it exploded beyond our wildest dreams. We thought maybe we might get lucky and find a, a purchaser for 120, 150 grand after a year and be on our merry way. Now, if someone offered us a half a million, we'd laugh at them. And it, 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 I, I, I'm very fortunate. I'm very fortunate, and my business partner, we're both very fortunate. And I, again, this, this grew and exploded beyond our wildest dreams. And I got to thank our readers. We have loyal readers, and without them and our advertisers, of course, we're nothing. We're spit on the windshield, as David Letterman would say. That, that's such an incredible story. And how have you guys been able to adapt into digital age? I mean, I was just talking to some other guys too here. I mean, just po even podcasting in general has just changed the face of how websites uh, approach things, media outlets uh, approach things. Do you feel like the podcasting game has only enhanced your website and what you guys are doing? Yes, and, and the main reason for that is you're looking at him, your camera's not focused on him, the Ira Kaufman podcast. Ira, who's originally from Brooklyn, he used to work for UPI in New York. He was stationed in Manhattan, and so he's, he's a New York guy. He's a Brooklyn boy, and he's been a longtime NFL writer, and he's got a great personality. And he was with the Tampa Tribune forever. He covered the Bucks. He's a Hall of Fame selector, Pro Football Hall of Fame selector. And like I said, Ira's got a great personality. He's a personality himself, and we thought, Steve and I, if he ever became unemployed, he would be perfect for us because he's a good columnist, and with his personality, he'd make a great... We were surprised he wasn't working radio anywhere. He always popped up on radio as a guest, whether it be Sirius XM NFL Radio, Mad Dog Radio, he's a regular. With Chris Mad Dog Russo, he's a weekly regular with him during the football season. And we couldn't figure out why Ray, Ira didn't have a full-time radio gig. And we thought we'd tap into that. And Ira's podcast has exploded because of his personality and his knowledge. And we've obviously pimped him a lot and, and built him to have a personality. And now there's these bars that cut checks to him for him to show up and talk bucks. And uh, if you use a podcast right, it's great. Now, me, I've got a radio personality, but I stutter too much and I got a rotten radio voice. People, some people say they like me on a podcast. I don't know. But Ira Kaufman is the star of his own podcast, and that greatly enhanced our site because we do a podcast minimum twice a week, sometimes three times a week, and most of that's because of Ira and his personality and his knowledge. So how do you balance life as, as an entrepreneur now, running a website and everything, doing your own thing, creating a content? Because there are times where you got to decompress, you got to clear your mind a little bit. So how do you balance that? Uh, I used to watch a lot of baseball. I, I still watch a lot of college football. Unfortunately, with the NFL, I'm so focused on the Bucks, so tunnel vision on, on the Bucks. I don't follow the NFL like I used to, but I still try to carve out some time, a Monday night game here or there, a Sunday night game here or there. But my outlet is, I'm, I'm a sports writer, I'm a sports junkie. I don't know too many sports writers that don't like sports. So my outlet is actually watching college football. That way I can be a fan. I could throw things, I could cuss, I could holler. That obviously you can't do if you're covering the NFL. Uh, so that's my outlet. And obviously, uh, you know, I have some hobbies. I'm a, I'm a big reader. I'm a history buff. I watch a lot of history documentaries. So those are my outlets mainly. Have you watched the XFL at all? Yeah, I've watched it. The second week was brutal. Oh, it almost turned me off. And the third week had some good games. Uh, the story in Tampa with the Tampa Vipers is 
the best quarterback. They can't find a place for him to play, and he eventually quit. He quit this week. He got tired of Trestman. He was clearly the best quarterback, and they put him in for a couple plays and then bench him. Put him in for a couple plays and bench him. And <laughs> even and, and that was the story itself. The Vipers were known not so much for their losing. They certainly weren't known for winning because they haven't won, but they were known for jerking around the quarterback who happened to go to South Florida, University of South Florida, and which is based in Tampa. So that was the, that's how the Vipers are known for in Tampa, how they goofed up with uh, Quentin Flowers, the quarterback who should have been a starter. Well, if it makes you feel better, New York Guardians aren't doing too better at the time we're recording this. They've gone through three or four quarterbacks. Did you hear about Matt McGloin's comments? Yeah, uh, Gilbride, he's very, he, apparently he doesn't like Gilbride, or at least they're not on the same page when it comes to game plans. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never seen that before where a guy calls out his coach at half at halftime. Uh, Hey, it's beautiful. Yeah, you know what though? There's there's never a, a dull moment in football. You've been covering it for years. Is there anything that still surprises you these days? About the NFL? N not off the top of my head. I'm sure I could think of something. I I guess one surprise is is the vehement hatred a lot of Bucks ha fans have for James Winston. Jameis Winston makes the Bucks relevant. And I'll give you an example at the Super Bowl. I go to the Super Bowl all the time, not the game itself, but the week of the Super Bowl for media, uh, media responsibilities, interview people, just develop content and context. And Fox Sports, Fox TV, Fox Network had media availability for all their talent. And, of course, Jimmy Johnson was there. Of course, Terry Bradshaw was there. I'm in a scrum with Jimmy Johnson. I'm like maybe two or three rows back from Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson's talking about Jameis Winston. I was the only person from Tampa Bay in there. He wouldn't talk to me about Jameis Winston. A little bit later, I go up the same thing with Terry Bradshaw. I'm like three rows back. Everybody's wanting to talk to Terry Bradshaw. I'm the only guy in the room from Tampa Bay area. He's talking about Jameis Winston. Jameis makes the books relevant. He's Mr. Entertainment, as Brent Musburger said. So I guess my reaction about the things that surprised me, at least locally with the Bucks, it's 50-50. The fans either love them or despise them. There are Bucks fans that literally want the Bucks to lose because that will grease the wheels to get rid of James. I'm not making this up. What is your one wacky, wild NFL draft prediction? You know, that's hard for me to say because I've seen Jason Light do stuff that no one would ever dream a man would do, drafting a kicker in the second round. So I, uh, off the top of my head, I'll just say the Bucks draft a quarterback. They said they aren't, but we know it's silly season. And with the with the undecision indecision on Jameis, you know, the, he's 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 not on sturdy ground right now. I wouldn't be shocked if the Bucks drafted Justin Herbert from o Oregon. Uh, I would not be. It wouldn't shock me if they traded up and got him. I'm not saying they will, but just given Jameis's situation and the fact that silly season, their coaches said already said, you know, Bruce Arians has already said, and Jason Light, the general manager, we're not going to draft a quarterback in the first round. Eh. I've heard that before. Now, before we let you go, what's the best piece of advice you give anybody that's hoping to have your success? It's still hard for me to, to consider myself successful. I, I guess that's it. Part of it, I don't have an ego whatsoever. And that's why I don't get along with so many of my brethren brethren in journalism. The egos are out of control. Why are you? Why, why, why do you have such a big ego? Are you a doctor? Are you a cleric? Are you a lawyer? Are you a governor? A senator? What? What? Yo, you're a sports writer. Oh, I should bow down to you. And maybe that's just the way I look at myself. I don't know. But uh, I guess humility might be one. Uh, I'll tell you what. Aggressiveness. Bernie, I don't know if you ever heard of Bernie McLutz. Bernie McLutz was a longtime columnist of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. And now he's the Mr. Media in St. Louis. He's a writer. He's a radio guy. Uh, he's a podcast dude. He's Mr. Sports in St. Louis. And I was lucky enough in college, I got to cover an NFL training camp when I was in college. You can't beat that kind of experience. And it happened to be at my same college. I went to school with Sean Payton, Eastern Illinois. And... Uh, at the time, Eastern Illinois hosted the old St. Louis Football Cardinals. They're in the same division with the Giants. And at any rate, I remember Bernie pulling me aside. Bernie was maybe 25, 30. I was 20. And he said, Lee, there's two things I like about you. One is you're aggressive. Always be aggressive. And that is, to this day, 30-some years later, that's still the best of, some of the best advice I ever received. Always be aggressive. Good things aren't going to happen to people sitting on their recliners watching NFL Network. As much as I love the NFL Network, it isn't going to come to you. you got to go to it. And so I think that's great. Be aggressive. Try to find a niche. Now, one reason, you know, it was, it was good timing, Steve, my business partner, and I had, was that there really weren't any Tampa Bay Buccaneers blogs. There were some, but we were so different. Like I said earlier, we decided we were going to be a New York tabloid. We were going to be like Phil Mushnick. And that 
that just shook up the Tampa Bay community so much. I think that's why so many sports writers in Tampa Bay despise Steve and I, because we sort of wrote our own rules. We wrote new rules and we followed them and they didn't like that. They had to play a different game and they were confined to a different game and they saw us have success and some of the guys I'm referring to are no longer in journalism because of the, uh, of the current state of newspapers. And uh, I, I think that's part of it as well. Find a niche. Find, a, find your little crease. And if you stay with that crease and you be aggressive and you work every day. One thing about JoeBucksFan.com, it was our trademark when we first started. It's our trademark today. Bucks news each day, every day. Every day we have a new post about something. Every day. I don't care if it's Christmas, Easter, New Year's, Hanukkah. I don't care what it is. Every day. There has not been one day since we launched the site in August of 2018, or excuse me, 2008, that we've missed a day. That is no joke. And so I think that's one reason why we have traffic. People can rely on us. They know every day we're going to have something different. When I go to Joe Bucks Fan, there's going to be new stories. There's going to be some fresh content. And I think that's part of the appeal of Joe Bucks Fan because people know it's not going to be like some sites or some newspapers. Some newspapers, I remember they wouldn't have a Bucks story for a week, week and a half. And that's the big, in Tampa, that's the big kahuna, so to speak. And it wouldn't be anything for a week, week and a half. And we're doing it every day. And I think... That is another reason why you know people they can rely on us. They know there's going to be something there every day, something different, and we try to be compelling as well. Lee, well, you have certainly been compelling in this interview. Uh, I don't, I don't even know if I want to ask you where can fans find you online because it's obviously JoeBucksFan.com. Is there anywhere else people can find you as far as like your podcast, everything else, all on the website? Yeah, well, the podcast is on all the major platforms: Apple, Google, Podbean. That's the Ira Kaufman podcast. K A F. M-A-N, Kaufman, Ira Kaufman. Uh, you can find it there, and of course, Joe Bucks fan. And uh, that's all we do is podcasts and internet right now. We got thrown off a radio station because we were too good. <laughs>